If you had the chance to play Ghost of Tsushima when it released back in July, you know that the game was absolutely fantastic. Typically when games take the feudal Japan route, they tend to lean heavier on the fantasy aspect of it. Ghost of Tsushima, however, was a little more grounded as far as story and gameplay goes. Sure, there were a few fantastical elements, but that's only because it's a video game, obviously. The atmosphere, the story, the gameplay, everything was just so good and it's easily one of, if not my favorite game of the year. Really my only complaint was that I wanted more of it, and with Legends, we get just that. Aside Aside from the new game plus, Legends brings with it a free multiplayer add-on given to players who purchase the title. It introduces a more fantasy-like take on the single player experience with a few twists. For one, the gameplay is a bit more centered around classes and the abilities that all four of those classes offer. Each class has a specific skill set. The samurai is effective with close range attacks and also offers self-healing abilities. The ronin is similar to the samurai but offers a phantom dog that can assist you in battle. The ronin also serves as the healer since his ultimate instantly revives fallen players, making him extremely useful. The hunter is the archer. This is the one that I personally started with just because I loved using the bow to pick off enemies in the single player story. While this probably wasn't the best choice since I found myself using my sword a lot anyway, the ultimate and the special offered here is great since you get a few one shot kills if used correctly. The assassin is the most powerful of the bunch with the ability to deal lots of damage and move quicker than the rest. However, the assassin's defense can leave them at a disadvantage when the rest of the team isn't pulling their weight. And just a quick warning, if you haven't played Legends yet, whatever class you choose from the start you're actually going to be kind of locked into for a bit until you unlock the other three classes. I personally kind of like that they did it like that because it gives you time to learn the ins and outs of the character so you have at least one class that you're really f***ing good at. This is also especially good if you have that one friend that you play with a lot because you can kind of coordinate the best team at the start of the game. Now with the classes out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay itself. <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima Legends offers some of the best moments in online gaming I've experienced in a long time. There are two different modes, the two-player story mode missions and a wave-based survival mode. In the story mode, the premise is actually really interesting in that it's an exaggerated retelling of the events from the single-player story. Sort of like a, there's no way this one guy did all this, here's what really happened version of the game. <laughs> the game is narrated by seasoned voice actor Greg Baldwin, who's essentially telling these stories. And during these retellings, you'll be fighting off supernatural versions versions of the Mongols, as well as some other freaky enemies. The open world aspect is just completely gone, and instead they opted for missions where you jump in and out through these gates that serve as kind of black holes, teleporting the player to different base camps to clear out. Some missions have these added puzzle elements where each player has to enchant their weapon in order to take out enemies that glow the corresponding enchantment color. I think stuff like this is a nice touch and allows both members to feel like they're actually doing something. Jumping into random games might be a bit difficult if you can't directly communicate with the players on on the opposite end of your session. The game is at its strongest when playing with people you know and you can organize your strategies with. For example, if you have a player who chose the hunter class and another who is one of the heavies, you can have the hunter take the high ground and clear out any strays that you may miss. This allows for fantastic gameplay beats that almost feel scripted with how fluid they are. Rescuing your buddy with raining arrows and flying down to assassinate an enemy because they don't know you're there yet feels so good. One surprising feature was the inclusion of photo mode. I was really surprised to see this here considering it's a multiplayer game and you can't pause a multiplayer game, but obviously it was really popular in the single player experience, so I guess it makes sense here. You do have to enable it before you start playing multiplayer, and pretty much how it works is the same as it does in the single player experience, except here it freezes up for both players, and then both players has access to all the photo mode tools. So you can still take pictures and add filters, and pan the camera, and line up your shots, and all that good stuff. However, when you exit photo mode, it does kick both players off of it, so you do want to make sure you communicate before you uh, ruin somebody else's shot. And then there's the survival mode, which has you and three other players in a map with multiple sections you have to defend against 15 waves of enemies and sprinkled in boss fights. The main objective here is to just hold out until the waves are complete. This offers some really fun teamwork and strategic planning to get all the bases claimed. It does get pretty difficult, especially if you're the type to take initiative and hold a section on your own, but when everyone is working together, you really feel the strength of everyone playing into their character's abilities. As you continue playing Legends, you'll unlock new gear and weapons. Each weapon and each gear piece has a number tied to it. This is called the key. It's basically a leveling system. The higher the key, the more damage you inflict on enemies, and the more damage you can take. Not only that, but if you intend to play on some of the higher difficulties offered in Legends, there is a specific key requirement to access them. Luckily, earning key isn't that hard, and it really just requires you to play the game, and there's no grinding involved, which makes it pretty easy for a casual player to experience everything Legends has to offer. And of course, with any online game comes cosmetic items. There are a few that carry over from the single player game. I think you get like some masks and some colors, and then you can also attach some particles 
ripple effects to your weapon. So like when you swing your sword, you'll have like autumn leaves flying from it. It's it's really cool. It's very Ghost of Tsushima. I like it. And also I'm very happy to say that there are no microtransactions in sight. And if you want some more good news, one of the developers told VG247 that there are no microtransactions in Ghost of Tsushima Legends, and we have absolutely no plans to add them. All of the content is unlocked through play. I can't stress how awesome this is because just being able to unlock everything you see just by playing the game is so refreshing, especially for a multiplayer game in 2020. Although I do hope that they continue to add to this game, and I also hope that eventually we will get the open world experience in a multiplayer format. I mean, imagine the ability to traverse the island of Tsushima and explore and reclaim different parts of land just like you did in the base game. If this was something that they do eventually consider, I wouldn't mind paying $2 for a mask that makes me look like Gumby or something. I don't know. The overall gameplay in Legends varies only slightly to the single player experience. The stances are now tied to your sword as opposed to having access to all of them and being able to switch on the fly. While you can access more as you play, you will be able to choose whichever weapon and stance best suits your gameplay style. But as you play and upgrade your class, you will then get access to better weapons which will come with better and stronger stances. Think of it as sort of a loadout system like any other multiplayer combat game and I really like how they did this because it allows you to try out different things and see what works best not only for you but for the rest of your team. So now for the real question, does Ghost of Tsushima Legends add to an already awesome game? Does it make it better? Does it make it worse? Honestly, just the fact that it's free and there isn't any sort of barrier to entry or paywall tied to it is I mean, it's definitely a plus. While there is some room for improvement, that improvement doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility. I can definitely see this being a long-term investment if Sucker Punch plays their cards right. As of now, they have a really good new IP with great gameplay and gorgeous environments. And now players can experience this with their friends with a pretty and colorful fantasy filter over it. One thing I am excited for is the raid mode. They haven't announced a release date for it yet, but it is described as a more strategic way of playing with four people. According to Game Informer, complex puzzles, specific mechanics, and a persistent demand for teamwork will all be readily available. This isn't a run and slash co-op mission, this is a lengthy experience that requires communication, dedication, and an expert use of skill. Honestly, this sounds amazing. I really like the direction that they're going with this new expansion, and I hope to see a lot more updates like it. Like I said earlier, hopefully we get some sort of sandbox type experience because I think that'll be the cherry on top of all of this. But uh, for now, I guess we'll just have to wait until raid mode comes out so we can actually see what it's like. Uh, I am curious though, if you've been playing Legends, what your opinion is on it? Do you think this is just more of a pick up and play and then drop in a month kind of thing? Or do you think there's actually some potential here for future updates and expansions? Do you think it would be better with a sandbox mode? Do you think that maybe they should add more story missions? Let me know in the comments below and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. <laughs> All right, bye everybody. Ghost of Tsushima is, for some reason, this photo mode is like blown up everywhere. And I guess I, sh I should say, I don't spend any time in photo mode. Most games, most games, I won't even open the photo mode unless it's like Spider-Man sure. where you have to. There's like missions that require you to take pictures and stuff. And you're kind of...